Hey, what's going on YouTube? Hope everyone's having an excellent day. Let's get to the videos. 2.0 Hey, 0.1 I don't know if that's like a online social media filter or if that's a person wearing a mask or something, but I like how everybody acting like it's normal. But that definitely is a normal. That looked like an alien base. Taking in big news, Israel has carried out large airstrikes against Iran, attacking Iran. This is bad and reckless behavior because Israel already knew ahead of time that this had the possibility of leading to World War III with all the threats and alliances beforehand. Iran has already promised immediate and maximum response, and we will see where this goes. Joe Biden has promised that America will not participate in the attack with Iran if Israel attacks. And Joe Biden better stick to his promises because we will not send any of our sons and daughters, any of our soldiers to die in Israel's wars. They chose to do this on their own and they can suffer the consequences of it, period. We should not even help in defense. This is absolutely reckless and terrible behavior. Israel is intentionally trying to push everybody else into war. And we need to abandon them as an ally before they involve us. I usually don't talk about politics like that, but I keep running into these, you know, daily war and like just more escalating first of all joe biden is always going to help israel yes i said it because in my opinion israel has some in his pocket it has most of big players in the united states in this pocket that's why it's able to do whatever it want to do point blank as far as iran attacking the point is everybody should just be able to just live a peaceful life all this war stuff is nothing but trying to make money it's all about war War and money. That's all this is all about. But Israel, in my opinion, has Joe Biden and most politicians in their pocket. I feel like they are controlling the United States about people really paying attention to it. A freak accident. An unsuspecting man nearly loses his life, narrowly dodging a runaway saw blade that came loose from a nearby construction site. Watch this again. The man walking into a neighborhood market. Seconds later, the blade comes spinning through the parking lot, slamming into the wall of the store just inches from the door. From the inside of the door, you can see the impact shake the building. Remarkably, no one was hurt. The construction company is now investigating exactly how that saw blade broke loose. Looks like final destination. If we exactly what it looked like it definitely looked like final destination that guy need to go win a lottery ticket excuse me that guy needs to go play a lottery ticket because his luck is 255 right now my rpg players You're going down a satanic spiritualism in portal opening hole i know i'm gonna have to really choose these words wisely because they're spilling tea and then there's kicking over the fucking bucket of tea i know for sure it's fact numerous witnesses to this one of the biggest pop stars in the world right now big huge fucking huge had an incestual relationship with a biological family member and you can find nothing about this family member anywhere if you're leaning into the fucking people pulling the strings calling the shots whatever to me the level of success of this individual knowing what i know it that's like some selling your soul type shit how do you well i figured I, you would I, know. I know it from people that went way back with these with these individuals yeah it's fucking insane and how this hasn't got out because here's the thing if i know a hundred people well, you... uh truth of the matter is is that's just some he say she say stuff that's a lot of weird things go on in the music industry and in Hollywood, I don't doubt that for a second. If you've been watching my channel, we have come together to understand that there's a lot of weird things that go on around that. But the thing is, is that this guy is just saying stuff. I guess we'll find out in the future if he's telling the truth or he's just BSing. And here it is, a fish called the Barrel Eye. Its extraordinary head is encased in a transparent dome so that you can look right inside. Its eyes within the transparent shield are enormous and point upwards. 
Roberson first encountered this bizarre animal over a decade ago. At this point, we were very, very excited because no one had ever seen one of these alive before. Only specimens that had been caught in nets. And as we watched it, we realized that it looked very different than all the specimens that had been collected by nets. This transparent dome over the eyes had never been seen before. When you catch these in the nets, that's all scraped off. It was an extraordinary discovery, and the strange fish with a see-through head would make the headlines. While the transparent shield was thought to protect the eyes, it was a puzzle as to how the fish could catch prey with its forward-facing mouth if it can't see what it's feeding on. It was a mystery that Robeson would also solve some years later. I just thought that fish is very beautiful. I know that sounds like a weird sentence, but it's a very mysterious yet beautiful creature. I'm more fascinating in deep sea than the space. If you guys want to see more deep sea videos, let me know in the comments. And let me know if you guys do you guys like deep sea more than you like space. Please let me know in the comments. Found out. You know those uh the Walmart brands. You know how there's like great value and oh, then yeah. the regular brand, right? Mm -hmm. Did you know it's made by the same company? Wait, the great value and the same one? So what great value does, they go to the same manufacturer, fam, and they just get it made cheaper without that brand name. What's crazy, the canned veggies. Yeah. You know, like the the can? Yeah. The big name brand is Green Giant, made by Green Giant. Uh, Even the great value. Same so why shit. do they do that? The same thing. Now there's this store called Aldi in the States. Okay. Now this store is known for like, we have the best products that match up to the big name brands. That's how they promote their store. If you go into Aldi, they have this brand called Millville and all of their cereals are offshoots of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, offshoots of Cookie Crisp, mm. offshoots of Rice Krispies. And they look so similar all by Millville. The real name brand is made by General Mills. So they dug deep and found out that Millville is the same thing as General Mills. What? It's the exact same. They've been lying this whole time. Damn. That's not surprising at all. You know, I grew up poor, so I knew that from a young age that that was the case. It's like 99% the same. Especially great value. Great value is pretty good. When I was in college, you could I saved up a lot of money going to Walmart and using great value. If you look at Google Sky right now on the computer and look down on an article, you'll find research bases from every major country in the world there. And you'll also find the Rockefeller Foundation base as well. Admiral Byrd was right. Number one place in the world for technology research is right down there in Antarctica. I believe that as the ice is melting, they're finding remnants of an ancient civilization. We know that Antarctica was not a frozen tundra for 12 million years. Like mainstream science says 12 million years to build up all this ice. No, 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 that's not accurate. We know this because of the Perry Reese map. The Perry Reese map shows Antarctica, what it looked like without ice on it. Antarctica shifted into that spot. How? Because we know that Antarctica is surrounded by tectonic plates. There was something called a pole shift of the crust of the earth, which shifted it from a more habitable climate into the position it is now. And that's why the animals that are being uncovered from the ice were flash frozen with undigested food in their stomachs. And there's an entire advanced civilization there, including some of the largest pyramids on earth, right in Antarctica. I also believe the flood that was over a hundred feet high that people talk about, especially that was his name, Plato. I think that was his name. Talk about in their like journal and stuff. I think that was because of the pole shift too. I could be wrong, but yes, Antarctica and a star, Safari, the Safari Desert used to be like lush jungle. So yeah, I'm not really surprised they found in different type of animals down there. And maybe it was a civilization down there that had insane technology. I definitely believe it. While all, all, why the one place in the world everybody working together is Antarctica? That's weird. We fight over the stupidest shit. Video from 1987 that still hasn't been explained.
I just want to say that if you, that if this if you believe this is from 1987, I suggest you learn about AI videos. Fortunately, that is the thing, and I can tell you with 100% certainty, this is from AI. Reason why I say that videos from the 80s didn't look like this. I mean, he put a VHS filter over it, but that was just about it. It's too it's too high def. A, a video from the 80s wouldn't look like this. Wouldn't look as as crisp as this video does. This here is not CERN, okay? This is not CERN. This is the opening ceremony of the Gotthard Tunnel in Switzerland. A little further away from CERN. It's amazing how many people confuse this ceremony with CERN. Is there a connection between the two? Because if you look at this picture here, yeah, it looks like just a uh, tunnel. CERN is a, is a tube, okay? Uh, Godhard Tunnel is a tunnel. Okay, there are two tubes, right? I don't know why uh, you would put gold horns as a costume for, for an opening ceremony, right? And this year was at CERN, okay? This year, this year was at CERN, so that's why you, you maybe think that both were CERN, but not, it's not. This year's footage before was the, the Godhard Base Tunnel. I don't care what it is, it's very weird, and knowing anything that I'm finding in these videos, they probably was doing some really disturbing stuff or some weird stuff they don't want people to do. You guys need to see this. This is one of the best UFO sightings I've ever seen. Take a look. Come on now. Y'all know that's CGI, right? If this was real, you would have been seeing this on every news outlet everywhere. Like, across the world, you would have seen it. So I'm definitely saying this is CGI. Look at this UFO creating crop circles in England. This literally looks like something from early 2000s CGI. What, the what do you guys think this could be? Meteor? Whoa. UFO? Your choice. Whoa. I have no idea what that could be, but saving the rest of the stuff with CGI, I'm going to guess that this is CGI too. I don't know. Jim, come out here and check this out. What the fuck? <laughs> have you ever noticed why vending machines, there's always a Coca-Cola one and then there's a Pepsi one right beside it? Have you noticed that? No, I haven't. So if you go to like a stadium, yeah, they usually have one machine Just and then, all for Coke and Pepsi. Yeah, and then another one for like the mm. Pepsi product. Why, why, why? But why would they put it right beside each other? Check this out. Yeah. Because if there's a Coke machine, right? Uh -huh. You're in your head, your thought process is, okay, am I gonna buy a Coke or not? Yeah, yeah. But when you see Coke and Pepsi, the thought process in your head is which one will I get? Okay. So you're, you're going to buy it. It's just which one. Mm. So it changes from, am I going to buy to which hey. one do I buy? Now, this is real science, fam. Mm. This is real, like, marketing science. Mm -hmm. Both companies started profiting way more and increased the sales the moment competition was right beside it. Damn. Because it, it no longer became a choice of, am I hungry or not? Am yeah, I thirsty or not? They give you options. It became a... Which one do I want? So I can see that. I could definitely see that being a fact. Because if that was the case, why are they all next to each other all the time? In this video, you can see uh, grabbing a lemon, right? I cut it in half. And then I cut it in half once more right there. You can see me cut it, right? I go get a bag. Okay, I grab the bag. I go back for the lemon. And I grab the lemon. And I touch it and I'm like... Why is it not cut in half? In my face, I'm like, what the fuck? So I, I'm like inspecting it. I take it out of the bag. I brought this lemon, trying to see if I cut that one. I recut the lemon. 
Let me explain what tensor rings are. You take a piece of metal, and usually they use the Egyptian cubit length, perhaps. It's not a random length. It's a specific length that has energetic properties. And you have uh, two copper wires. And you twist them at a 45-degree angle. So you attach that to the wall, and you attach this to a drill, turn the drill on slowly, and then it twists the two wires together at a 45 degree angle. And then you bend it into a circle and you braise it shut, you weld it shut. People wear tensor rings on their wrist, single tensor rings. The fancy ones are they take two or three rings, lock them into each other, and then you can create different shapes by twisting them around and you just set them on the table and they give off good energy. It's like it's another form of creating energy like orgone generators. Scary moments caught in real life. The tensor rings, I've never heard of that before. That's very interesting, but just twisting metal together to make energy. I don't know, that sounds weird, but it only sounds weird because I don't comprehend it. Okay, the first one, I feel like that could be real because it seemed like they were generally just recording just to have fun and some weird face is behind them. They don't even notice it. The one with the, the, the hole from the office desk and the eye, I'm assuming that's a piece of paper. Just a print out print of a person eye. That's what I'm that's what I'm going to guess that what that is. Because I'm pretty sure the person would have really saw they'd have freaked out way more than that. And two, there's no hole anywhere else. So it has to be a piece of paper. I can see it was like a hole going through the wall and then like that was like a neighbor or something. That would be really creepy. Gotta put our tinfoil hat back on for this one, y'all. This is weird. So I come across this post on my Twitter. Can someone please tell me what the F is going on in the background? Okay, photo number one. Boom. Look in the background. Get your full. Shit's getting weird. Photo number two. It's a little weirder. Hold on, let's zoom in. This is weirder. Like, what's happening here? So I'm like, this is no way that this is real. I'm gonna, let me go to her page myself so that I can see if this is even real. Well, I'll be doggone. It's really on her page, March 16th. Y'all see that right there? And I'm zooming in myself so that y'all can see, like, this is a real photo on her page. Look at that one. What in the reptilian hell is going on? What? Need somebody to explain to me like I'm three years old why America's Got Talent has shapeshifters in the audience. And if these aren't shapeshifters, then what the hell is it? And why would someone, especially a host of America's Got Talent, be editing faces in the background of her photos? This is not April Fool's. This was posted on March 16th. It's on her page right now. Somebody tell me. Because for those of you who are so good at refuting conspiracies, Give me an answer for this in the comments. Thank you. The thing I can think of is, is Photoshop. The second thing I could think of is when the picture was being taken, maybe they were moving. So it came out blurry and distorted. But I'm having a hard time even believing the second one I just said because it's still too crisp for it to, for the person to look like a, like one of them had a unibrow and it was turned into a reptile. So I don't know what that could be.
you guys have any idea what that could be, let me know in the comments. I don't know what those things can be. I showed this maybe like my first video, maybe it was like maybe my first or like early videos in January. I showed this and I still don't know what that is. If anybody knows what it is, please let me know. While a man was live streaming, he captured something very strange coming from the sky during a lightning storm. He informed his viewers that every time the lightning strikes, it's followed by a strange, unexplainable sound. And he actually captured one while he was live. Take a listen. Right now, it sounds like bearings, like... Right now, here, it's gonna scream. That is so loud. Some people in the comments claim this is more of a paranormal nature, like a banshee screaming in the night. Others say it's aliens or mythical creatures like a dragon. But whatever it was, no one can explain what would make this sound. That is so f loud. In this clip, a man hears an insanely loud sound which can only be described as some sort of bass heavy horn filling the entire sky outside of his apartment. He quickly goes outside to record the odd event and captures this strange noise several times. Scary. Police sirens and cop cars could be heard riding all around as panic breaks out in the city. Completely blown away by these strange noises he's capturing, he listens for a while longer, but after the noises appear to stop, he goes back into his apartment. However, shortly after, the strange sounds come back. I'm downstairs. I go downstairs to the studio. I come up out the studio and I'm headed back upstairs to like the main area where everyone's kind of congregating and hanging out. And the music changed. It was like really hard and heavy at first. And then, you know, like jamming, dancing music. It was a little softer, you know, it was a little more sensual when I came out the studio and started going upstairs and on my way upstairs, there's like this couch. I won't say how the couch is designed because then that may give away whose party and whose house this was. There was a couch and on the couch, I saw a couple of guys really going at it hard and heavy and man. And I was like, oh. You know, you know, my brain, I'm thinking, well, you know, the celebrity party, people do what they do. As I started moving up stairs, I passed them up and I noticed that it wasn't just those two guys. It was more and more people just going at it. I was like, OK, it's time for me to roll. I'm going to grab my stuff and I'm going to get up out of here. I did not know that's how this went down. So was that shocking? Absolutely. Was I forced or coerced into anything? I was not. But. Why they felt that comfortable, I don't know. Maybe the invite list, they was like, yeah, all these people. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm shocked that it went down. But I've been to another situation, another person's party, celebrity party, and, you know, a celebrity tapped me on my shoulder, and I was hanging out with them, and they was like, yo, nephew, you might want to go into the other party because this cabana 
we about to close it up. And they closed up the cabana and there was a, about three or four big name artists in there. And a whole bunch of ladies start walking in that cabana and a security guard stood in front of the door. Hey, they didn't coerce me. And shout out to my guy, Brandon T. Jackson, man. Brandon T. Jackson, you know, it. I, I don't know what he's up to these days, but at this particular party, Brandon T. came up to me and he said, yo, man, like Satan will steal your soul in this industry, bro. And he was really like, I loved the fact that he felt like He's like, I love your soul and your spirit, and I want you to thrive, Cray. I don't want you to get devoured out here. And I just appreciated that because for him, he was like, he has seen some detriments and some of the dark side of things. And he was like, yo, I want you to be taken care of. The thing that always kind of pissed me off when I'm watching these videos of celebrities talking, they always try to like not tell you all the information. Why not just say who party it was? What's the big deal? Who cares if it was like, it sounded like it was like a swinger party or something. You already know what's going on. You're talking about most of the story, but you're not saying who it is. And I also find that very weird that all of a sudden people want to talk about Diddy and trying to expose him when he's been doing that stuff since the 90s. And now all of a sudden everybody want to start talking about these stories. But when they was trying to get big or become famous, they was willing to do all this stuff. Now they're already famous. they trying to hurry up and say that story so, to, so they won't be involved in his downfall pretty much. So if you've been following me for a while on social, you'll know it's not my brand to scare people. And in this video, that is not what I'm trying to do. I am just telling you what I know. I'm an astrologer. I look at past events, cycles, and put patterns together in a way that allows me or can help me predict the future. I'm not always right, obviously, but I am a good amount of the time. So, here's what I have discovered. I think there's going to be an attack on the United States in the next six months, and I'll tell you why. So, in astrology, there's never really one thing that tells you something is going to happen. It's usually two or three things that kind of have the same signature, and that's what's going on here. So, first things first, this eclipse today. The energy of this eclipse is very conflictual, very discordant, contentious energy. Mars, or excuse me, Aries, the ruler of Mars, is the sign of war. And with the recent threats that Iran has made, it has me really concerned that as the eclipse unfolds over the next six months, there will be an attack on the U.S. Now, if there is an attack on the U.S., it will be August or September, and I'll tell you why. It's because Uranus will be square the U.S. moon. This is important, and it's important because when Uranus was opposing the U.S. moon, 9-11 happened. Things happen in cycle. Uranus square moon would be about changes around your home or family, if this was in a person's chart, disruption around the home and family. But in a country's chart, it can show the people in our literal country, our home. So it got me thinking, what are big events that are going to be held around October, excuse me, August or September? And I Googled and the... So again, there are two or three things that led me to this conclusion. The biggest thing being the Uranus cycle with the moon, but this eclipse is also conjunct the U.S. Chiron, which is very important too, Chiron and Aries. So hopefully I'm wrong. This isn't to scare people. Please don't go crazy in my comments. I get shit all the time from stuff that I don't even think is a big deal. I really think this is just informative, me telling you what I know, practicing my craft, but I don't know. I hope y'all don't take it the wrong way. I am prepared to see. When I was younger, I used to be really, really heavy into not horoscope not oh this is my sign that's it i mean like birth charts natal charts indian and the western astrology and that stuff was pretty accurate when it came to people but i don't know i had to look at the events of, with the, the, the planets when 9 11 and all these other things happened hoping what she's saying is wrong but i guess we'll find out in august or september if what she's saying is true i don't really follow uh, NATO charts or astrology or Vedic astrology anymore. But yeah, when I was younger, I was really heavy into it because I learned more about myself and how plants influence you and stuff. And if you believe energy is real, then it's 
kind of hard to deny that a planet uh, can influence you. But as I got older, I kind of just kind of fell off. State that I have been at locations where craft of un of unknown origin that did not originate on the face of this planet was there. I am prepared to state that while I was there, we saw living dead bodies of entities that were not born on this planet. I am prepared to state that we had what we what they referred to as interfacing with those entities. We have contact with aliens not originating from some foreign country, but from some other solar system. And I have been a party to that. I've worked it. I've been there. And I know some of the things we do is really, 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 really terrible. Not hostile toward us. We're the enemy in this instance, but we're the enemy, I like to think, for the good reasons. We're concerned about what some other country might do. I have concluded that I'm fighting against the clock. That I have but a short time to try to convince people that we are moving in an avenue where we are going to militarize space. Once we militarize space, we will have a whole new avenue of technology open up to us. While NASA says it's going to take another 1,400 years before we achieve what we call interstellar travel, I'm telling you, by the end of this century, we will be doing that. We want to acquire this technology. We want to make this technology part of our own technology. Within the next 25 years, we're going to militarize space. As a result of militarizing space, we are going to acquire new technology. We're going to evolve new technology that's going to lead us into interstellar travel. As a direct result, we will become a threat to them unless we spiritually grow also. But I feel that if we do not, if we do not go ahead and spiritually grow, we are forcing the situation where the entities will eventually make themselves known. And they will make themselves known, and no power on Earth can stop that from happening in order to avoid us from going out into space. That if this should happen, it will happen to an unsuspecting world population. And that can create some very serious problems. But this doesn't deal just with the United States. It's a truth that the entire world has to be informed about. And that truth is man is not alone. That we have people from other planets, from other solar systems coming here. Not surprising at all, but it's like, so what? Still got to go pay your bills and live your life. Who cares if it's some aliens watching us? And they don't see us as an enemy anyway, which I think is stupid. Me personally, if I was an alien, if I was watching humans for X amount of years, these people got nukes. They nuke in each other. They are a threat, and I'm not letting them come out in space for nothing because I don't want humans expanding anywhere else on any type of planet because they're a threat. Humans kill everything they see. They are virus. I hate to say it like that about my own people, but it's true. Not all of us are like that, but the ones that's in position of power are. So, you know way I would allow humans outside of the planet. Point blank. And there's no way under any circumstance they get any of my technology. If they do, they getting they getting dealt with. They're not gonna know about it. Point blank. Because as soon as they get thought like traveling in space, what do you think humans gonna do? You think they're gonna just peacefully go to Mars and then there's another, you know, civilization that's there, and then the humans be like, Oh yeah, you know, we're just gonna live with them peacefully. Nah, they're gonna blow them off the map. Just like they did in the United States, just like British, you know, Europe did back in, you know, the last 600 years blowing different countries off the map, taking them over. That's what, that's what humans do, unfortunately, when they got position of power. Now, they don't got the power. Yeah, they're going to sit up here and be oppressed. And then the trust and believe humans don't like being oppressed. So they're going to try to find a way to do whatever they want to do. That's the problem, personally, if I was an alien. That you are a threat. You got nukes. If I was an alien, I probably would just take all the nukes. Humans. I would literally come down here and just take them. I mean, what are you going to do if I have higher technology and you're not getting none of my technology? Because as soon as you do, I'm going to screw that. I mean, that's just me. I hate to sound so negative about humans. I'm sorry, but look at our history. We're not good for the galaxy.
if the other if the other places are peaceful, which I'm 100 percent sure. Well, I'm not 100 percent sure, which they might be. Humans need to spiritually evolve and learn to live with each other before they can live with other people or other species on different planets. I mean, we kill our own like animals and stuff. So imagine what we would do to galaxy. Then tells a true story of the Illuminati. So I just had something really, really scary happen. And I don't know if this lady is telling the truth. If she is, I think that people need to listen to it and maybe look into it. If she's not telling the truth, then it's just something crazy. So about 10 minutes ago, my boyfriend and I are leaving my apartment complex in his truck. And at the same time that we're leaving, we see a lady driving in and we look over and she's taking pictures of us. So my boyfriend's the type of guy where he's not just going to be like, that was weird. So he instantly goes in reverse and she takes off. So she's driving down the complex and then we're following her and she parks. So he's like, hey, it was a girl. So you get out and ask her why she was taking pictures. So I'm like, okay. So I go right up to her window and I knock on it and I go, roll your window down. And she's going, no. And I'm like, roll your window down. And she's like, no, no. So after about four times of asking her, she finally cracks it. And I go, can you roll your window down? So she rolls it down and I go, were you taking pictures of us? And immediately she's like, no, this is what's going on. And she grabs her phone and she's like shaking, like trembling. You can't even look at her phone. She's shaking so much. So she goes, I'm being stalked and followed. And she pulls out her phone and she starts showing me her camera roll. And her whole camera roll is like zoomed in pictures of like random cars. And she goes, the elite sent people after me. She's like, sent people after me. She goes, I was on trial for OJ Simpson. And she starts showing me pictures in a courtroom, zoomed in pictures of OJ Simpson. She, her passenger seat has piles of like documents, like redacted, like statements and stuff like that, like court documents, pictures of his glove, like all of this stuff. She shows me a Zoom call screenshot of her talking to like, like random men and she straight up is like they sent people to hunt me down and like kill me she's like the illuminati is real she's like you're young you probably know the illuminati is real she's like no one's believing me everybody that i tell thinks i'm cr i'm crazy and she's like no one believes me and she's like and i need help and i was just like i don't know what to say because i'm like what the fuck am i gonna do and she basically just went on for another five minutes straight. I was standing at her window and my boyfriend was watching me like 20 feet away. And she just kept going and going and showing me pictures and pictures and like documents and books and like passes to get into courthouses and like all of this shit. And she literally was just crying about how she's like terrified to like even leave her house. And then so I was like, do you live in here? Like in the complex that I live in? And she just goes like, sometimes. And then I asked her too, I'm like, your car is like a driver car like you have a number on the back of it and it's like a really nice like blacked out suv like do you, is this your car and she goes she like insinuated that she was driving it just like because she was driving it so i'm assuming she rented it or something so that she didn't have to drive her normal car so she was like more hidden so i didn't get her name i didn't get any more information than what she told me she told me a lot a lot a lot of shit about the court case about the oj simpson thing she told me a ton of stuff about told me about stuff that's been happening to her and like i don't and i hate stories like that because you're not giving us all that information you keep blacking out the very famous family why even tell the story if you're not going to tell all the story i don't believe that for a second person thank you carl good morning everyone my name is donna Hare, and i worked at philco ford aerospace for from 1967 to 1981. during that time I was a design illustrator, draftsman. Uh, I did the launch slides and landing slides and also projecting plotting boards, lunar maps for NASA. We were a contractor, but it, most of the time I worked on site, <clears throat> excuse me, in building eight. I had the opportunity to do extra work during downtime, which was between missions, and I walked into a photo lab, which was the NASA lab across the hallway. I had a secret clearance, which is not that high, but I was able to go into restricted areas, which this was. At the time, I was talking to one of the techs in there, and he drew my attention to a photograph, that a NASA photograph. It had a dot on it, and I said, what is that? Well, he drew my attention to it, and, and I said, is that a, a dot on the emulsion? And he said, and he's smiling, and he has his hands crossed, and he said, 
round dots on the emulsion don't leave round shadows on the ground. And this was an aerial photograph of the earth, I'm assuming the earth, because it had pine trees on it, and the shadows of the craft, or whatever it was, were in the same angle as the trees. And by its very nature, UFO, and I wanted to clarify that to a gentleman that was talking to me, means unidentified. So I did not know what this was. But I realized at this point that it's very secret, that the, it was kept secret because I asked him, what are you going to do with this piece of information? And he said, we always airbrush these out before we sell them to the public. So they're pes pesky little creatures uh, appearing on this uh, photograph they wanted to get rid of. Uh, after that, I decided I would ask questions to other people that work there. And I found that I had to ask them away from the site and not on site. A guard told me that he was asked to burn some photographs and not to look at them. And there was a guard, another guard guarding him, who was in green fatigues, watching him burn the photographs. And he said he was too tempted. He looked at one, and it was a picture of a UFO. And he was very descriptive. I can go into that later with anyone. He immediately was hit in the head, and he had a big gash in his forehead. He was knocked out. And he's terrified, so he would have to be protected. Uh, another incident, I knew someone in quarantine with the Apollo astronauts, he told me that the Apollo astronauts saw craft on the moon when we landed. And that is what he told me. And he also was afraid, he said, that the astronauts are told to keep this quiet. They're not allowed to talk about it. So I do want to let you know that I worked out there for a number of years, and this I ran into this. So it's not something everyone knows that works out there for a long time. My boss didn't know about it. Uh, some people that sat right next to me didn't know about it. It's, it's very strange because I don't know how they can do it, but they can let some people know about it and then others not. I'm willing to testify before Congress that what I'm saying is true, and thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, y'all ready to be annoyed once again with these Mandela effects? Because these three I'm about to bring y'all, y'all thought the Richard Simmons one was bad. I'm about to bring y'all three more that you're going to really be questioning in your whole life, okay? Hold on. But before I show y'all that, I'm convinced that CERN definitely has something to do with these Mandela effects at this point. And the reason I say that is because I haven't been able to find any new ones. And I'm trying to figure out why. Because why did not happen constantly? It seems like it probably happens the most when they turn that CERN machine on. But let me know what y'all think. Okay, now for this first one, we're going to start off light. Smokey the Bear or Smokey Bear? Let me know which one y'all think it is, okay? Because I, I know what I remember. I remember it being Smokey the Bear. Because Smokey Bear just sound incomplete. Smokey the Bear. And then somebody found evidence that it was Smokey the Bear. Hold on. See, that's the thing about these Mandela effects. They get real sloppy. Because it's some evidence usually. I'm going to just say usually. Because you're going to see the next two that I'm going to do. I don't know. But usually there's some evidence left over in Exhibit A. The true story of Smokey the Bear. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, y'all might have heard this one already, but just stick with me because I'd never heard about this Mandela effect. And when I tell y'all this shit tripped me out because I know this man, his name is Ed McMahon. He used to work for PCH, Publishers Clearinghouse. But they're trying to say that Egg McMahon, this man standing up here with this big ass check and them balloons behind him, like I remember him. They're trying to say that he never delivered those checks and he never worked for Publishers Clearinghouse. I call BS though. I didn't really connect what they were talking about. They started saying huh. that you owed the money for a check or something like that. And I wasn't thinking well, of yeah, Publishers well, yeah. Clearinghouse. I, I know those guys and they're, they're still waiting. Publishers well, yeah. Clearinghouse. And I wasn't thinking of Publishers, well, yeah. Publishers Clearinghouse. You could actually walk up to people's doorsteps and give them a check. Oh, yeah, sure. How many hmm. times did you present someone with a well, million dollars? I gave away $110 million. Check? Up to people's doorsteps and give them a check. Oh, yeah, sure. How many okay. times did you present okay. someone? Okay. Another one. I'm one of the winners of the Publishers Clearinghouse. <laughs> Okay, this next one is for my younger generation. The last video I did, that was for my 80s babies, you know, 70s. This one for my younger generation. Help me out with this because I asked my children, they already done confirmed it for me. But I want y'all to help me out. Cindy Renee Cheeks. 
I don't know if that's her middle name, but we gonna go with that. Sandy Cheeks, I know for a fact that she used to wear a backpack or oxygen tank, whatever that square mechanism was behind her back. It used to be there. But when I tell y'all, I scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. Like, I tried to find this backpack or oxygen tank, whatever the hell it is. There's nothing out there. So if you find something, please let me know. Furthermore, am I tripping? Did she not ever have an oxygen tank or a backpack on her back? Like, all the time. I'm not talking about just one episode where she went to the moon. Because I saw that somewhere where they said she only wore it one time. No. I remember Sandy Cheeks wearing a backpack all the time. Now, I'm going to keep digging to try to find y'all some new ones. But until then, y'all be sure to let me know. Yeah, I definitely recall the publishing house, the guy going to people's doors when I was a kid. I don't know why, like, saying that wasn't a thing. That guy definitely worked for me. I remember that guy very vividly. I actually forgot about it that she showed it. And SpongeBob, Sandy, I'm not sure. I didn't really watch that. That was, like, when I was in college. So. What your thoughts are in the comments. And also let me know what you think about the Mandela Effect. Do you think we just going nuts? You think we in a parallel universe? Do you think that the government playing with us? Like there's so many different theories out there. I would love to hear from you. I think people just trust their memory too much and you can't trust your memory, especially the older you get. That's why we have journals and everything else. You should write things down. Now, there are also some far-fetched things that we could say, yeah, and in my opinion, 2016, a lot of weird things started happening and it seemed like the it just seemed like, especially the United States, I don't know about the rest of the world, started getting really weird. Like, stuff just didn't make sense. And that's when that Manila effect started to really come out on videos and social media. So, if one would say that we went to another dimension, or different uh, universe, worse compared to the one we had before, yeah, I would say around 2016. Tell I me mean, what you guys think in the comments. You guys think the Manila effects are real, or you think it's just... Like, it's just your memory just not working as well as you think it is, or you think we went to another parallel universe, something like that. Let me know. I would love to hear you, you guys' thoughts. Peace, love, and gratitude for watching. After the nuclear war, I saw giants pop out, and they was about, about 15 feet tall. And they was, I saw two of them standing next to each other talking, and they was built like guys that go to the gym. And one had blonde hair and the other one had red hair. And it was like straight, like, <clears throat> and they uh, looked like Caucasian people. And they was, they didn't like people. They didn't care what race you, race you was or nothing. They just didn't like you. I heard the conversation. They talked about humans like, like we talk about chicken. You know how you like chicken wings and hot wings and stuff like that? They talked about us like we was nothing. But this was just in certain places. So they got to be here now. And I've been thinking about this for many, many years. They have to be here. They had to already be here. And a few years ago, I seen this video of some military dudes go over to the another country. And one of them giants came out and attacked them out of a cave. See, those caves go underground, deep underground. And this one, he said, had red hair. I seen some that had blonde hair, too, though. So, but in the future, they're going to come out after the, the human population knock their numbers down by war and the natural disasters and stuff. So when the human population numbers get small, they're going to come out and they're going to be attacking people. Like, I'm not even playing and eating people. They're going to, I've seen this one place, they like a police station that they just took over and they just like, they, the whole back of it was like blown off from like, I guess a bomb or something. But it was like mud and it was surrounded by this stone wall, this area, right? And I seen a bunch of men in there, like naked looking. And they was all in there and it was muddy in there and they was muddy. It looked like they'd been in there for weeks, days or something. And they all had this terrified look in their eyes. I mean, I've never seen a human being have that look of fear. Maybe, you know. If you're about to die or something, you know, <clears throat> but they all had this fearful look and the weather was like not good because it was cloudy like and there was no roof on the place. It was like outside. And then I turned to look at what they was all looking at because they was all backed up against a damn wall, right? Like backed up against the wall. 
So I looked over here to see what he was looking at. And it was some giants, like three or four giants walked out. And these, excuse my language, y'all. These motherfuckers was no joke. Like, I'm not even playing. I'm not no Christian or nothing. I believe in the most high Yahweh. And I'm a, I'm an Israelite, you know what I'm saying? Myself. But just a little background. But these giants walked out. Man. They was, they, I ain't trying to, you know, make it seem like they cool or nothing, but they was something to look at. They was intense, man. They was, they was cool looking. And they was talking to each other and stuff and laughing. And they had these men fight in this mud to like the death, fight each other and stuff just for their amusement. And one of them, before they, they left out after a few men had been killed and they walked out, then one came back in with a handful of look like oatmeal or something, uh, a rice or something. It, it wasn't rice. It looked like oatmeal. And he took like a, a handful of that and just threw it out in the mud. Threw the oatmeal, dry oatmeal in the damn mud. And the men that was left ran like they was crazy at trying to eat that oatmeal. And they was eating mud. It's, man, it was crazy. I saw some wild stuff, y'all. I saw some wild stuff. I thought I was shot at, though. I'm out. Ellen, were you surprised by the allegations about P. Diddy? Did that surprise you about P. Diddy? Ellen, can you He's been on your show week? many times. Have a good night. So tell me about your birthday party. Am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. When I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen the show up. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ellen. Happy birthday to you. You didn't invite me to the party, so I'm just here in my office having shots in honor of one of the most beautiful women in the world. We knew it was only a matter of time until Ellen DeGeneres, the queen of mean, was dragged into this whole Diddy situation. Paparazzi recently caught up with Ellen to ask how she feels about her longtime friend Diddy facing some serious allegations, and Ellen got real nervous when the reporters brought up those infamous Diddy parties. Over the years, Diddy was a frequent guest on The Ellen Show. Now, with the current allegations surrounding his parties coming to light, fans are revisiting some of his older interviews because, in many of those interviews, Diddy openly discusses his infamous parties. There's even a moment where Diddy playfully puts Ellen on the spot, questioning why she consistently declines invitations to his parties. But here's the kicker. Rumor has it that Ellen did indeed attend some of Diddy's parties. However, she wasn't at those star-studded, glitzy events we typically associate with Diddy. Instead, sources suggest Ellen may have attended other, less publicized gatherings at Diddy's house, where some disturbing and potentially illegal activities allegedly took place. Meanwhile, unsettling footage recently resurfaced on social media, showing Ellen Ellen making Justin Bieber uncomfortable and asking inappropriate questions. So with rumors going around that Justin was allegedly victimized by Diddy and other industry men, fans are now wondering if Ellen knew what happened to Justin. You just brought a friend to Bora Bora? Yeah. And you're just naked with your friend? Why are you putting me on the spot like this? Gosh. I mean, you can say, why can't you say you're dating somebody? I'm not dating anyone, though. She's just a friend? She's just a friend. Wow. <laughs> I have friends, I've never seen them naked like that. <laughs> and they don't bring me to Bora Bora. Stop, you're making me blush, dude. But what's the real truth about Ellen and Diddy's friendship? Did Ellen attend those rumored freak-off parties? And could she get roped in the ongoing federal investigation into Diddy? Let's break it down. Now, what time would your party start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like, what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party. Uh -huh. So let's first talk about why people are saying Ellen DeGeneres and Diddy have a lot more in common than meets the eye. To be clear, Ellen hasn't faced any serious criminal allegations like Diddy, but she does have a reputation of being the meanest woman in Hollywood. And some of the rumors going around about Ellen are downright spine chilling. To begin with, both Diddy and Ellen have presented themselves to the public in a way that's pretty different from their real selves. But now, it seems like the facada they've been rocking has started to crack, revealing a glimpse of their true callers. Back in the 80s, Ellen got her start 
performing stand-up comedy at small venues and coffee houses in New Orleans. She quickly gained traction and began touring all across the country. Her first big break on TV came with a short-lived sitcom called Open House in 1992. Although it didn't last long, producers were impressed and cast her in their next project, These Friends of Mine, which later became known as Ellen. But Ellen truly made waves in April 1997 when she came out on The Oprah Winfrey Show. Her sitcom character followed suit in the iconic The Puppy episode, which became a landmark moment in TV history for its portrayal of LGBTQ plus issues. After her sitcom ended, Ellen returned to stand-up before bouncing back with a new sitcom, The Ellen Show, in 2001, followed by her massively popular daytime talk show, The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Now here's where things took an interesting turn. Despite her reputation as the friendly, goofy talk show host who loves to dance and give away prizes, cracks began to show in Ellen's persona. In 2007, a former writer from her sitcom spoke out about how she treated the reading staff poorly, criticizing their work behind closed doors despot putting on a charming front during rehearsals. Similar stories continued to circulate over the years, but Ellen managed to silence most of the chatter. That is until 2016, when Kathy Griffin spilled the tea in her memoir about an encounter with a certain beloved daytime talk show host with short blonde hair. Griffin later confirmed she was referring to Ellen, revealing a side of her that wasn't so warm and fuzzy after all.